Welcome my friends to Moonbreaker. This is going to be the definitive beginner painting tutorial for the painting utility that is right here in the game. We are going to be using the ever popular and powerful Maximus to showcase all the techniques you need to get started painting your very own warband quickly and easily. We're not going to use any techniques that require a high level of artistic talent. We're not going to use any fancy digital art peripherals. We're going to be using our keyboard and mouse just as the good lord intended. I'm not going to assume that you have any background in digital art or painting physical minis. We're going to teach everything from the ground up and specifically tips and tricks that work here in this painting utility. We are going to move fast, but I am going to show my full process of taking a mini from nothing to this level of detail. There are timestamps down below if you're looking to get tips on a specific technique, but let's dive right in. First up, taking my webcam off the screen, we need our full screen real estate to be able to work with here. First thing, we are going to go to new scheme with the plus here. We'll save the changes that I had made on the demo paint job, and then we're able to bring it in and we will title it here in a second. So we just have our bare bones mini here. And at the very beginning, we have to come up with a color scheme, something to guide and inspire us as we move forward. Rules for picking a color scheme. Number one, don't use too many colors. We are looking for a primary color and then two minor colors. We're allowed to get an extra color in there for the weapons and use neutral colors, gray and brown, to be able to do any accents. Uh, specifically here on the Maximus figurine, we're looking at his belts, we're looking at his boots, things like this. Notice I did not use white or black on the list of neutral colors. This is because of rule number two. We never want to use pure black or pure white, except in the cases of the most extreme shadow or highlight. We always want to be using shades of color that we can take deeper to be able to show shadow and highlight to be able to accent. Rule number three, this is a situation where rules are meant to be broken. If you have something that you really want to try or you think looks cool, then absolutely go for it. Now, I don't recommend going to the color wheel or trying to pick complementary colors for your different picks between your accent colors and your primary color. What I do recommend doing is drawing your color theory from an existing character or artwork, something that really speaks to you that you want to translate the tone, the energy of to your model. So here today, we are being inspired by Lucian, a character from League of Legends. Now, say what you will of the game League of Legends. They do put a lot of money and effort into creating iconic character designs and physically speaking matching Lucian to the model of Maximus is fairly one-to-one -one. we have a character with two pistols he's got a flaring cape on top he's wearing gloves and otherwise has a lot of leather and belts it is very close translates very easily and so that's what I'm going for here a very ease of transfer we don't have to be too creative in how we adapt the Lucian style to Max here so we are looking at our primary color being an off-white, maybe even to the silver tint. We're gonna use a dark skin tone, even darker color for the hair. We have a light purple, maybe even lavender as one of our accent colors. Otherwise we have charcoal for our other accent color, weapon color is going to be a very light, I'm gonna call it moonstone. And then we also have some deep bronze metal accents. Now that we have our direction and inspiration, it's time to get to work. So we need to name our scheme. We're going to go with Lucian Max just as a identifying mark. And then we are going to go down here. I've already started Lucian Max. We're going to want to create this new um, palette that says add custom palette down here. You would want to go here and then name your palette, start selecting your paints off of this. What's beautiful here is this will transfer in between all of your minis. So if we suddenly want to paint Astra later on, we're going to recognize that she has the exact same cloak style that Max has here. Maybe you want to bring those same colors that you did on Max's cloak over to Astra and you want them to match completely perfectly. You're going to have this palette wherever you go. As we begin to assemble our palette, this smoke section really speaks to us. So if you guys want to follow along exactly, I'm pulling haze as our white for the primary cloak. And then we are going to go up and we're going to pull char as our dark um, accent for the pants and the breastplate, etc. I am going to pull, I found, uh, where were you? If we slide down to moon, we have Gravitone Ore. I said that the shade of the weaponry reminded me of Moonstone. We're going with the lightest here on the Moon palette, giving us that Graviton Ore for the weapons. Our extra accent here, we wanted to be a purplish color. I like this nectar color. You can, of course, go ahead and paint on the mini to be able to see what things are going to look like, how they're going to look 
uh, next to each other. This kind of contrast. This actually looks absolutely beautiful to me. The uh, the white, now that I'm seeing it, could be too light for us initially. It's going to be very hard to accent this. We might take this down a shade, but we'll do that in one second here. As we once we once we have assembled our full palette. One thing, as I'm looking at the mini, where we have to start deviating from the Lucian model, I want to be able to have uh, a, another bright maybe yellowish color something blonde effectively for the fur pattern here rather than going toward just a, a brown or a gray for the animal fur here and then the belts and other accessories i want something that's that stands out a little bit more because i feel like that's very much in line with max's character and personality so we're going for this sun side off of the flora as well so we grabbed nectar oh hang on i didn't add add me sun side now that we have our full set of colors assigned, as I said, I wanted to darken this white a little bit. And rather than going to one of the preset, I could just drop down to exhaust, but I wanna go ahead and show that you can very easily create any shade that you desire by going down to this. This is uh, simulating a wet palette. It will allow you to blend your paints to get the exact shade that you like. So then we're going to effectively assign these two right next to each other, and then we're gonna start to blend. Dragging over here, this is probably too dark, we want something very light still, but a shade darker than this white. We want this white to be closer to the final tone, but all of our base layer that we are about to put down onto the model is going to be a shade darker than what we want the model to ultimately end up as, if we're following the technique that I am going to teach here. So we're going to go back, and then I should be able to edit, and then reselect the dropper here, and then hover over this pixel that I want to grab. You can hold down left mouse click to be able to get and you see it reads the exact color that you're looking at and then we're going to grab this gray. So there we are. We have this initial gray and then we're going to have the lighter tones of all of these uh, effectively matching one to one. That's why I love having this five color spread. The primary, two accents, weapon, and then a detail, a neutral. The neutral, we went a little bit more flamboyant because of Max already going with the, uh, the rules were made to be broken. Uh, but here we are. And then you can have right below them the lighter shade that we will use to highlight them um, in a minute. Now it's time for paint to hit plastic. Holding right click will rotate the model. Uh, clicking down middle mouse button will allow you to pan about and then left click is going to be using any of your paint brushes. Here in the top right we have the different options of brush to use. Paint, wash, dry brush, airbrush, stipple, decal. We are going to go through all of these through our techniques uh, leveraging them to varying degrees. Beginning here with the base coat we are going with paint. So we select the color that we want and then we're actually going to start on some of these accents. We're going to start filling Max in. We can select on on the left here, we get the size of the brush. The hotkey there is the brackets, but I like just using the slider here. This shows the color that we are currently working with. And then down here is the opacity. And so you can see if you lower opacity, then it will matter more what color is underneath the paint that you are putting down. You may have to stroke your brush multiple times to be able to get it to build up. I mean, I might as well be demonstrating while we do this. So it'll take multiple times to get the coverage with this feature but the paint feature here should have just a high opacity we want strong coverage undo is the godsend of this utility it's what really makes this so nice compared to painting on a physical model well let's get in here so we're going with our accent color we want to go ahead and zoom out a little bit give us a huge brush size maybe not that huge and then we want to come in here and if we start oh my gosh it's auto auto set down to me if you just start holding here you get everything that the brush touches transformed to our charcoal i don't want everything i don't want to have to repaint the cloak if i uh can't avoid it so uh to very much keep us from having to be very precise with our mouse what we can do is we hold shift while we hold left click and then it will only paint the area that the devs have assigned it automatically breaks off on areas that the developers have assigned as different parts of the model. So we get the boots here, and then we're gonna transition to the pants up here. We can very quickly fill them in. It also has a auto snap often to fill into the opposite side of the model. We wanna get this uh, chest piece set up, and then we want to get just the, the sleeves of the shirt right here. And as we do this, it should 
as we see autofill on the other side of the sleeve. It understands that we just want to paint that all with our nice charcoal base. For the gloves, we're looking at accenting to our purple. We'll get that in here. This is where it's, this complex portions like this, trying to color the gun and then the different fingers, that's where the shift click is absolutely saving us. It's a lifeline. Get the other glove in here. And I'm not gonna talk through the entire project. Oh, we started hitting the belt. Okay, that's where the handy undo comes in. Nice tip is to go ahead and paint in small brushes. Hold, take your finger off the click. And that way, if you make a mistake, you can very quickly erase a small portion without losing all of the work. Say if you're trying to do detail work, later on it's gonna be far more important. Now I want to come in and start using some of these neutrals. His belt, we'll take our brush down, paint this along nice and clean up, oh, starting to get his fingers. That's where if I'd done the smaller brush strokes, I would've been able to save some of the work on the belt. Get this all the way around. I'm not gonna sweat it too much on the areas where the sun don't shine. From the game board perspective, you have to remember, the model is most often going to be viewed about this large, probably more like this large if you play the way I do. So anything like trying to fill in precise details underneath the cloak, you see here, we didn't paint all of his sleeve. Nobody is really going to see this. We'll still fix it though because I'm a little paranoid. Get this in. Love it. Okay, now I'm going to finish some of the accents. I'm realizing that we have to add a couple of colors for we didn't select our skin tone or our metal accent. So we're going to go conductor on this uh, for our accent. Get this added in. And then do I want elemental for the skin tone? Fresh soil, scatter vine. I feel like let's let's do a couple trials here. Do we want this kind of tone or do we want more this kind of tone? This is very rich. Very reddish brown is how I would describe it. I'm gonna go a little bit paler. Skin tone is always tricky. We're gonna talk more on that once we get to doing the face, but right now I just wanna be able to wipe out the whole base coat here, hit the time lapse, let's go. Okay, we got this skin tone in here. We're using, skin tone is always tricky because saying that somebody has white skin or brown skin dramatically oversimplifies the color combinations that really make the a, a true human complexion. So any, everything always has more reds, more browns than people would expect just hearing the, the different skin tones described. And so it can really be um, a labor of, of patience to be able to find the right tone, especially because I feel like this is a dramatic oversight on the developer's part. They have not given us a great set of flesh tones within the set of paints here. Most, if you're painting physical minis, I know I'm not expecting any experience painting them, but um, makers of mini paints have extensive lines of skin tones that are automatically blended uh, to try and give you a lifelike line. Now, of course, we're going to do more work here to be able to develop highlights and bring out a true complexion face. Faces are very complicated. Uh, they're probably the most challenging part of the mini, but we're gonna come to that and we're going to be able to have the techniques to get it done um, without too much of a headache. Now, we have completed our base coating, but not really because the cloak is still undone. Now, this is because normally it's the primary portion of the model. I would have wanted to do this first to be able to see how the main color speaks to me on the model, but I wanna do something a little bit interesting. If we pull up Lucian once again, and I don't know if we're really going to be able to see it great in this picture, but as we look right down here, we see that the purple accent from the gloves is on the inside of the cloak, and oh man, is that gonna look good. Having the inside of this flared cloak, and especially right here around the collar, pop as our purple with white on the outside is gonna be absolutely beautiful. But here we run into a bit of a challenge, so let's show it. Or I, the collar is the best place to show it, of course. We'll zoom in here, be able to start working on the detail. So if I want the outside to be by white and I hold shift and I color in, then I get it. And then we turn around here and we want the inside to be purple and we paint this. So it came out purple, but see the game is automatically the utility. I should, I'm gonna use game and painting utility here interchangeably. It's automatically reading that it wants the paint to come over to the outside. With the paint brush option here, 
there's no way, as far as I understand it, to turn this feature off. So we, we would just keep on painting over and over, and uh, rather than settle for having one solid colored cloak, we are gonna go to a slightly different technique because if we go to the airbrush here, this does care about a number of factors, but as a byproduct of this, it will not paint on the opposite side of narrow uh, model features like this. So we will be able to paint the inside purple and then airbrush the outside, the white that we want. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about this in a sec. What we are actually going to do here is switch to paint. We're gonna paint the entire thing from the outside purple because that is going to be the easiest way to reach around these areas rather than contorting the camera to be able to reach on the inside. So the whole thing here is going to get set assigned purple and it has marked this outer cloak as separate from the rest of his cloak. I'm going to treat them as this exact same colors here today. If you want to add a little bit more variety, break up the colors more on your model, then absolutely be my guest. But this is how we're going to assign things right now. We're going to come over here very quickly, mark over everything that we can. We could even zoom out to be able to get things moving a little bit faster here, but it works out fairly quickly anyway. Get all of this marked up as purple, and then we're going to check the insides quite quickly to make sure that uh, the inner regions of the cloak are going to read as this light purple. I may even come be a little bit more paranoid and get the, some of these recesses where uh, nobody is realistically going to get to see it, but I will know. I will know, and that, that can make all the difference. You want to be able to be proud in your work, and if that means going the extra mile to say that there are details you'll be able to find in the model, even if you zoomed in, turned it inside out, then go for it. I believe that we are done here. And just checking, especially these inner portions, I want to make sure that those are the best purple they can be, because that's what's actually going to stay <laughs> purple. Okay, especially around the collar, that will likely get the most attention. We're reading uh, facial area, top of the chest, weapons. These are the bits that the eye is naturally drawn to in this kind of game. That's where you want to put most of your effort towards the, the lower regions of the model, some of the broad, flat areas. Um, you don't have to put that much time into that spot because uh, people are naturally just going to be looking at the face, helmet, specific like call out accents, top of the chest, weapons. Uh, those are the important pieces. There we go. We're all purple, now we're ready to airbrush over. So the airbrush is similar to just lowering the opacity. It cares about the color underneath. We're gonna have to do multiple passes to be able to get the purple gone. It also cares about the direction of the camera. So if I angle things like so, let's see if we can get a good example, and paint here, you see that it, as soon as the, the fold of the cloak is gone, it doesn't paint over there. The painting utility would have automatically started filling this all in. The airbrush cares about the actual direction we're looking. So from before, like right here, this is actually a great example. From the direction that we had been painting, it looked like we had a solid line going. And now we see that there is more purple showing up here because the camera was hiding a dip in the cloak. So it can take us a little bit. I like doing quick circular motion here to be able to get things to fill in as best they can. We want to take things over and we're going to fill in airbrush the entire cloak this way. We can still do the shift click trick to keep the airbrush from bleeding over onto any other portions of the model. Very important for us. And we're just going to fill this in. And there we are. Base coating is done. Look at this. The purple on the inside does pop. Absolutely. Around. We're getting the effect that we wanted. I understand if some people are, are somewhat frustrated at that needing to be the way that it is done. And here's the thing with the airbrush, there's always gonna be patches that'll start appearing where it didn't get blended fully, just looking at it from a new angle. Uh, we also smudged his belt here. So some touch up required. Hang on, I should go to the paint to be able to mark this away immediately. But he is looking fine. Also, these belt buckles. Oh man, these belt buckles. Now, because they're in a position that the, the reverse side is never going to be seen, we can now go to paint and be able to get these over. I don't want purple shadows. That's just going to look extremely strange to be read around the, um, the belt pieces here. Hang on. Is this still purple or is this a black? Are you... What are you telling me? Are you telling me that you're just modeling a shadow in that area? I believe so, but there we are. We're able to clean this up. 
So you can take some liberties if you know that the reverse side of that portion of the cloak is not going to be um, visible. It's probably going to be easier to do his back here, honestly. I was having a pain with the airbrush just because I had the tool selected, but I can go over this with the paint and it's not going to mark off any of the purple that I'd wanted to be able to read in. All right, Max is base coated. He is looking good. This is a time where you could make some changes to your color palette, depending on what you see here. Now remember, as we progress on, we're going to bring all of these colors up to a shade lighter. Uh, so if you see anything that you feel like is too light or you don't want to go lighter, you're going to want to darken it down. Now there are other techniques that we're going to talk about to be able to do that. You don't necessarily need to rebase coat to be able to accomplish this, but this is the last time we're making broad sweeping changes to the model is going to be easy. The techniques we are about to cover are going to absolutely make the details on this model pop and they're going to be able to get implemented extremely quickly. But if you guys are enjoying the tutorial, leave a like down below. That helps promote it to the rest of the community, get these tips spread out, and it supports the channel. So it's a way that you can give back if the tutorial has helped you out. Now let's get into things. We have covered paint and airbrush. Wash and dry brush are up here and they are our next pieces. Let's talk about how the painting utility is simulating these two things and we are going to start stylizing Max's weapons here with a number of different techniques. The wash is representing on a physical mini a very runny ink. So the water naturally wants to pool in the recesses, the low portions of the, uh, the model. So as we paint here, it's going to automatically bring out shadows to the model. In painting a mini, I'm going to wax a little bit esoteric here. Uh, fundamentally, it's interesting to be able to paint a tiny object as though it is larger because it is so small and the way light volume works, the model is not going to actually be able to throw shadows on itself the way a life-size object would. So we have to paint in extra shadows, extra highlights, that because it is so small and its volume area is decreased so much, it doesn't fully bring to life. So the wash is beautiful for being able to darken an area, bring out natural shadows, and it's also going to make things look grimy, weather-beaten, which for a game like this is a wonderful look, let me say. Now the wash here is also, it deals with opacity similar to the airbrush multiple passes over and it's going to start getting darker and darker and ultimately work like the paint like here we've gotten everything to our charcoal color so now we need to be very careful how uh, hard we push our wash we want to make very even strokes at first you can bring the opacity down a little bit if you're feeling a little bit more artistic because you can go ahead and run the wash over uh, extra times in areas where you know you want more shadow. So here on the lower portion of the gun, and you can still use the shift click trick not to bleed over into other parts of the model, be able to wash everything individually. For stuff on the lower portion, I know that I want this naturally shadowed. We're going to go ahead and give it a little bit of extra wash. That's going to bring out the shadow. You can use different colors for the wash, but I generally like sticking to a, um, a common the, the dark color. You could go all the way to black, but then I would bring the opacity down a little bit. A charcoal is a very good wash. You can use a brown wash as well. That'll give you a little bit less shadow, more um, weathered appearance. And so it's definitely something that you can play around with. A lot of versatility in the wash as you learn how to use it. Right now here, just getting the basics down. So the gun has been washed. Now and it's interesting that you use the word wash, but the reality is that it does the opposite. It doesn't make it look clean, it makes it look dirty. We're going to go one more pass off the top here. Bring those shadows out. I want us to see these. These guns look like they've been, they've been used. We can always balance out how grimy or dark it is with this next step. Okay, just recovered from a game crash, so sorry if the transition was a little abrupt there, but now we are going to, as I said, the dry brush. What the dry brush is simulating in physical terms is putting just a tiny bit of paint onto the brush and then running it lightly over the model. The raised portions are the ones that push into the brush enough to be able to pick up the paint and it's the bristles are not going to get anything down in the crevices. So this is while the wash accented the lowest regions and the crevices of the model, the dry brush is doing the opposite. It is accenting the highest points and what we naturally want here is a lighter shade to be able to do this accent. So we are going to need to start mixing a lighter shade here for the dry brush 
we are running off of um, and unfortunately it doesn't tell us the name if we pulled the paint directly but we were using this for our weaponry we're going to put this down here onto the wet palette also hard to read <laughs> given that the, the natural gray that we we're seeing down here we'll use the pure white to be able to transition a slightly lighter look um, let's get a full white and then let's go ahead and blend that down a little bit able to see some nice gradient here having it a full step lighter is fine it is fine it's going to look great um, later on now you can add this directly to the palette if you want to use it often which we do because we're using this um, element for a lot of the accents his belt buckles his um, kneecaps these extra armor elements on the gloves etc so i want to use it enough to put it go ahead and put it onto the palette here and we're going to read it in right here nope that's not what i wanted Okay, I ended up just putting a gray dot in the middle there. Make sure you're clicking the dropper correctly. And there, now we have it added in. Let's take, we're on dry brush. We're gonna go ahead and select this new light color. We can begin brushing over here. Now, if you want, uh, being a little bit safer, you can lower the opacity. It's gonna take you multiple passes. You're probably, but this way you get a little bit more feel on um, continuing to add paint until you get the, the effect that you want. So we're going to hold shift to make sure we're not bleeding this accent over onto his glove. It's way more important to remember shift here uh, than with the wash because we're likely going to use it the same dark wash for the entire model. Um, but this accent color you want to be specific to every element and every color that you are accenting. So over we go. Getting a little bit of um, accent brought in here. Lightening up the entire bit and really just focusing on the raised portions, the parts that are gonna be naturally catching the light and the eye the most, letting the lower portions of the handle and the undercarriage of the gun hang, letting the shadows naturally have developed, and that is really making the different elements of the gun pop. We're still gonna come in with more details later, but I am loving the effect here. So I'm gonna repeat this for the other guns, all of the different pauldrons, and we're gonna time lapse over. Okay, before we do the time lapse, we have to show the, the before and after, right? It's hard to see sometimes when you've been working on an element how much good you've done. This was the gun before. Uh, beautifully modeled, nicely rendered. You can still read it, but then if you come over here, you're able to see the, uh, the immediate difference. It looks so much better defined, so much more dynamic. We're really doing yeoman's work here with the wash and the dry brush. Now with holding shift click, it will automatically bleed over if the, the paint selector tool feels like it falls only on the region um, separate from the model or separate from the gun here. But the gun is being read by the model as the same element as uh, the shoulder pads. So if I hold shift, uh, yeah, let's go to that. I could just undo. Okay, hold shift. It's going to automatically start washing across here because it reads this as the same. It's not covering the glove in between, but it is covering over here and the gun. Now let's undo that because it's way too dark. Um, so we, we caught the belt belt buckle, but we can, it's their small elements, simple elements. We can fix that easy. I didn't want to undo. Um, I'm just going to roll with it and be able to make our repairs later. Make sure that this is nice and dark. Do an extra pass on the underside and keep on moving. I noticed on the gun here, for some reason, it's really having the inside of this gun in deep shadow. Now, or getting it feels like it's getting a double portion of the wash. It is in shadow. It could be that as it's modeling it, it understands this. Held close to his chest, it needs to be darker. So I'm okay with this, but you do want to be double checking things like this where the, um, the game utility is automatically assigning just a, a slightly different take than what you, you might be expecting. So uh, there are some times where you just you turn the model over and you get an unpleasant surprise. You're going to be able to fix things, um, but it's just good to be aware. Like don't, don't trust in the game utility automatically filling everything over. It is very convenient in a lot of ways, but it's not entirely infallible. And here with these uh, dry brush finishing highlights, I'm really trying to focus on the upper edges, leaving the lower edges with more of the wash intact. And there, look how dynamic that is. It's absolutely fantastic. You're just looking for a mark. It's rounded over halfway. 
you're going over with the uh, the dry brush. Under, you still want to give it a little bit to let the raised edges get picked out, keep some of the gloom off, and then with the lower opacity, you can really abuse it. Uh, it can take a lot of a beating, is what I'm saying. You can go over it many times without it being too much. You can undo very quickly. Um, be able to get exactly what you want. And raising the very top portion, well there I was selecting the gloves, so thank goodness for the undo on that one. <laughs> if there was physical paint, uh, that would have been hours of headache right there. We're gonna lower this down to be able to really hit this top highlight that I want to be quite light. Um, as you look, it's also very good to look at things from farther and farther away, more often than just zooming out to the full model. On, on the game board, you're rarely looking at this. At this, it's fine to see imperfections, as you zoom out, the more extreme highlights read better. And so if you're really focusing on presentation for the game board, this looks fantastic. Another trick on the airbrush here is that you can angle your camera a little bit because the direction, I believe, affects it. It, it seems to help me, at least, in reading, putting lighter areas on the, the upper portions and then letting the lower portion fade down into shadow. Having things a little bit splotchy, especially on what is going to be a metallic surface, actually makes it look better. Uh, so in this situation, these are looking fantastic. Now I've left this shoulder pauldron, which the game is automatically reading as the same material as the weapons and the other elements we've already done, but I want it to be a different color. So we're not touching it right now. Also the helmet is gonna get a lot of extra detail work, so I'm okay leaving this for now. What I really want to do is show here on the fur how powerful these elements of wash and dry brush can be. So we're coming in. I'm actually leaving the wash down at the 80%. I was really liking that opacity to give me a little bit of extra control. And I want this to still read as a fairly blonde. So we're going to sweep in here. Now here we need to be careful because already this feels too dark up top to me. I want these upper um, hairs to be quite pretty bright and the lower ones to be to be darker, if anything. If it's not uniform, the lower regions need to be darker and the upper regions need to be lighter. So if I'm not getting that, I need to uh, start altering. We're going to quickly pass over here. And it's okay if it's a little splotchy. It's hair. Hair naturally has um, a very dynamic look. It shifts slightly. It's not completely uniform. And so the less uniform it is, the, the better it's going to look in the, in the long run here, which is a little bit counterintuitive. We're going to zoom in to get these stragglers. Though they are going to be... I'm okay with these being <laughs> pretty dark there uh, because they're going to get dry brush to be very light given the position that they are in. And then here, I'm actually getting more shadow because they're they're locked up between his collar and then this shoulder pauldron. Makes sense for a, a region of shadow with just enough of the, the blonde color to show what is underneath. And then this looks like it's gotten kind of nothing. Some of these areas, because we're going back with the dry brush, we're gonna be able to lighten back up. And now this hair is, it has much better definition on the details. Get that in. I'm actually coloring this crest the exact same. So we're going to lock that up, get some shadow, very quick pass there. And now we want to make sure that we get a run. Let's shrink this down actually, right down here. Because the lower portion is definitely going to be the darkest in a um, piece like this. And even though it's a it's a stripe. That will get balanced out um, as we as we accept as we go back to detail later, and it also doesn't appear at all if you start zooming out. So it's okay to have some hard lines uh, when you're really up close. That you're going to see those hard lines are not perfectly blended. You could do stages of the wash to be able to make a perfect creamy blend. Which, if you want your model to stand up to really close scrutiny, then go for it. Be my guest. But I'm painting for the tabletop. And so I don't mind having a little bit of um, hard lines when you're up close. They disappear when you are far out. Now we're going for the dry brush and we need to create the light tone for this blonde. So we're going to paint down here and then we're going to take our white uh, haze or snow cap. We'll just use snow cap. We'll get this in here. 
blend it in a little bit, come back, get the color that I like. Yeah, we'll go back and forth a little bit here. It's fine to go back and forth some. Starting with white feels a little easier to me actually, because now I can come in, but I want to be able to see what the, the normal color is right next to it. I need this contrast to get the right read. That looks beautiful. Now we're gonna dropper that, add it in, pick you up, dry brush you, large brush size, baby, let's go. Make sure that the upper regions are getting the most love, the most attention. Everybody needs the attention, but these areas need it far and away the most. Get this going and look at this. We get the dark shadows naturally popping out, the highlights coming in on the hairs. And we started coloring in the pauldron. Fantastic. Let's uh, let's take that back. I need these regions, so we're probably going to need to shrink our brush down so it picks up that I'm working on the right region. Come over. Keep on holding shift so that we're not accidentally doing what we just did by coloring in the pauldron. Get these specific hairs. These lone ones, I feel, need to be very light. I don't want a dark hair coming out. It needs to look connected to the rest of this fur mantle. This region still shadowed. Panning around, I'm happy. I'm very happy. Get this front area done a little more. If you're looking at regions of highlight, um, looking down at the front of the model, this right here, kind of what I'm cycling over, is the brightest portion. You're, you're imagining that the sun is hitting him front on um, from above is what the, the classic thing is. Now you can imagine that a light source, like say he was holding a lantern, you would then want that throwing light on the rest of the model and it would change the direction of your highlights. But in absence of a light source appearing within the mini scene, you the, the default is this position right here, effectively, to be able to hit this region. Now let's get this crest highlighted up. Make it nice and beautiful. Beautimos. Get it in here. This is smoothing out that harsh wash line that we got before, especially right in uh, right on this guy. Yeah, and look at this. Now I want to show the raw power of the dry brush here, and we're gonna take his boots as a pure dry brush project. They, we based them the charcoal. Now we're gonna come in with the dry brush, and I actually like the idea of him having fairly light boots, man. Max, the boots here, <laughs> they could be anything. I could see him wearing white boots to match his cloak, but I'm gonna go with this le really light leather color that we've chosen for his belt, but then also for the crest, and then we're gonna get this continuity with his boots matching as well. He's such a fashionista. You have so much freedom here with Max. I love working on this, this model. So now we're gonna come in with the dry brush, and we're working, we're dry brushing over, we're not using an accent color to the charcoal, right? We're just going right on and using it effectively to paint the entire thing. And because it cares about what was underneath, it gives us a very dynamic look just immediately. Look at this. I gave no effort to this. And that looks good. You could wash this and do extra detailing now that you've done this. We're naturally getting this shadow under the calf. We're naturally getting deep shadows under the rim of the, the turn top of the boot, etc., etc. We're naturally getting shadow underneath. It came out so quickly and I quite like it. So now we're gonna do the other boot and we're gonna keep on grinding this out. Now this boot is interesting because it has shadows positioned very differently from the other one. This portion of the heel kicking out should actually be in light, but then this portion is gonna fade into shadow. Uh, it, it means that you can kind of have a heyday with your, with your shadowing, but this portion I want to have a shine to it read like it's it's catching the light even with the flared cloak right above and then this portion i'm just going to leave and we're going to see later on once we've completed details it's a good idea to keep on doing your model in kind of um, layers of attention rather than taking say the weapon all the way to complete quote unquote completion before you've even base coded the rest um, doesn't help you get a good understanding of how things are fitting together and now looking at it, I'm gonna need to touch up this other boot, but we're gonna keep on moving here. Do the pants, and then I'm gonna do the breastplate very similarly to the boot here, but we're gonna come in with our metallic. If you're going to be bringing a metallic color up, you really want a very dark 
base. I feel like that that does the best. I'm not gonna profess that I'm a, a miracle worker in the non-metallic metal painting techniques, being able to use normal paint colors to get a metallic effect, but we're gonna do our best. And this dry brushing over a very dark color is certainly a lightning fast way to get a passable result. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna try and make sure that we get the right areas in shadow and light. So remember we said light's coming in from up here. That has us really focusing on this upper portion of the collar to get nice and strong, bright color. The rest of the chest can be a little more bland, I would say, but we still wanna catch details. As it fades into the cloak, let it, let it be. And then down here, we're actually ready to get it a little brighter again. This is looking good. The center portion probably needs to be not as dark. Get a little bit more highlight coming on those raised areas. It's really beautiful detail work on the model and I, I wanna celebrate that. And there we are, look at the, ooh, we're even getting the, glint, the little bit of gloss and how they're rendering the model is helping us. This is starting to look excellent. And this pauldron, I want to match the breastplate. So we're actually gonna bring in the black here back onto the paint and then bring that up. Here we wanna keep on practicing what we've been preaching on having. We have such a beautiful rounded surface here that we want a nice, as much as we can, a nice smooth blend transitioning to these lower dips being darker. We're actually gonna focus the sun right here. So this is the bright region. We go over many times, get a nice clean coloring. And then as we start to turn, we see that it's looking more and more dynamic. The backside of the shoulder coming through here. This little portion, very much in shadow. This makes sense to me. We wanna make sure that the edge here does read as bright rather than black, because there is a, a good argument to saying that you wanna be able to look at this, this is where he's looking. You wanna look at him on this angle as well and see all the elements, not see any uh, <laughs> glaring mistakes here. So this black line I wanna take away. And there we are. If we don't like the really deep shadowed ridges, we can go through with a wash um, that is something similar to this, probably a little darker than the what we're dry brushing here. And that will be able to clean it up, make the, the shadow contrast a little less harsh. Like I've been saying, from far away, the model on the board, you can pick out the details well with some dark shadow lines. Okay, now for a completely different application of the wash and the dry brush. We're looking at the helmet here. The helmet, all it, within the game's terms, because of the shift click, gets painted the same color. But I want these interior wings painted our purple. I want those to pop. And so this is a portion where we're gonna be forced to freehand this color in. And I really hate having to freehand it in. If I smudge something, I have to go back and fix it. So we're gonna leverage the dry brush and the wash as much as we can to make the freehanding quite easy. We're gonna take a nice clean uh, little brush here and then go make sure I'm on paint, full opacity please. And we're gonna block in as much as we can, but we're gonna stay well away from the edges. No danger of a misclick taking us outside the boundaries that we're looking to paint in. And you guys can see just how unsteady my hand is. You guys are probably have to, be you can't be worse than me is what I'm saying. You can't be worse than this, but we're just blocking it in and we're gonna be able to get those edges um, in a way that's very forgiving to not running over with the wash. The wash is naturally gonna be drawn to that crevice because this portion of the model is considered lower than the rest. So the wash is gonna be drawn right up to the edge and give us a very clean line without us needing an ultra steady hand or a um, physical extension uh, tablet to draw with anything like this. So we're gonna get these in and now we're going to the wash. We're going with our color here, zooming in. We're staying very high opacity. I don't wanna have to pass over too many times now we start painting this in. And you can see that with this level of zoom and the wash wanting to flow in, even though my cursor does 
start to clip over into an area that I want to stay our beautiful moonstone metallic gray. I'm able to get the purple to run right up to the edge that I like. So now I'm going to fill this in. Unfortunately, you do have to do multiple passes. It can be fatiguing on your wrist. Um, but I feel like this still is a net gain to trying to use the paint tool and then having to, for me, repaint over many, many mistakes. If you guys have any additional tips that I may have missed for a technique or something that would make painting the regions that I have even faster, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to be able to improve my skills, make a more advanced tutorials for everybody as well. So we're gonna keep on going here and time-lapse over finishing this helmet. All right, this looks fantastic. And we have a little bit of streaking. I make, I'm make. i gonna accept this because it is a, you know, it was a piece of armor. It's okay to have a couple, a little bit of weathering, a little bit of damage. We're gonna come back and highlight this. Any of these smudges, I'm gonna come back without fixing them on the fly. I'd rather come back now and um, clean them up rather than waiting. All right, we ended up with some light streaks here because we've already washed the helmet, but we're going to dry brush it as our next step. So um, we'll see how it looks after that. Then we're also going to actually use the stippling effect on the helmet to be able to showcase how that can give you a really nice metallic effect as well. Uh, so I'm not sweating it right this moment. Next step of the beauty of the dry brush. And here uh, on the underside, it read some of it getting painted through, but not all of it we're gonna have to fix this with the wash man that looks terrible why did the game decide that it needed to behave in this way this nice creamy solid this absolute garbage okay i've got to fix this but then we're going to jump ahead to our next use of the dry brush okay detailing work on the cloak so we're back to our dry brush as i said we would be we get these nice lines and if we want to be a little envious if we uh look check out what we've been able to do i'm loving the way that it's looking but let's go ahead, save, and then flip back to the what the devs were able to do, the default look. We see that they've gone with this accented line, dark blue, and then a nice light blue. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. They're blending top notch. And then the metallic work for them, oh, it's, it's fantastic. Back to us, we want to be able to follow a similar pattern of bringing out this uh, embroidery. I think we're gonna pick a little bit more bold of a contrast given that we've got the white cloak. Um, but we're gonna try and show exactly how to get this to, uh, to pop out. So once again, this is all read by the game as the same physical element. So we can't use shift click to try and keep from uh, a mouse slip smudging everything that we've worked so hard to be able to, to airbrush here. But if we go dry brush, it becomes much more forgiving. I can dry brush over this, and because the dry brush is naturally drawn toward the raised portion, which this is, then even though a lot of my cursor is, is often slipping over, and we're getting a little bit of smudging, zooming out, I become quite okay with that level of smudging. Um, but it becomes very forgiving to be able to trace along this line and be able to fill it in. And depending on your... Um, level of perfectionism, you can try and keep that smudging from happening. This is certainly a region where taking lots of short clicks for a quick undo if you do have a dramatic mouse slip will save you oh so much. Do not try and paint large portions of this at a time. Keep it segmented. Keep the blending nice and smooth. And it is gonna be a little time consuming, but I promise you it is worth it looking at the finished product. Here, it does become apparent that the game has another feature that's trying to help us out. As your cursor moves along the model, it's moving closer to and further from the camera but it automatically scales itself to paint the same region, which is really, really nice. You can find a camera angle then that looks at like a very harsh angle so that you get 
a large line all on screen at a time. And when it starts very close to the camera, you're gonna need a larger paintbrush to be able to fit. But as we look like, um, yeah, let's try and simulate a nice, nice example here. Probably gonna be down here on this portion. Okay, so we get something like this, right? Starting right here, you see this? We're painting a very large region. We move away toward the horizon, it gets smaller and smaller, but it's covering the exact same area on the model. So you can smoothly move your mouse down um, along your highlight lines here and not be worried that as you get farther away, you're gonna be more likely to smudge or not. And look at this. Now that, I'm loving. I'm checking out the, I just noticed the glove here. Uh, we got either airbrushed or dry brushed or something. The glove is not complete. We're gonna fix that later. But look at that, the cloak, look at this. The yellow accent, the blonde coming out on the white. Mm, I'm digging it. And it's gonna look, the beautiful thing is, one of the reasons I chose this gold is because it looks good on both the white and the purple on the inside here of his collar. It does, the smudges read a lot louder on the purple, so uh, we need to be more careful here, but thankfully we have a, a shorter way. There's less um, embroidery to cover on the purple side than on the white. This is also a good time to remind yourself that you are going to be the only one who ever sees the vast majority of these details. So you're doing this for yourself, whether you find that freeing or you find that uh, fires up your pride to do even better is up to you. I'm certainly not on the perfectionist spectrum. Um, it's, a, it's a good idea, just in the, in the broad scheme of things, understanding that if you want to paint an entire war band, Give yourself permission to go a little bit faster, a little bit looser on areas that people are not gonna notice and make sure that you have time to put your best work onto the parts that you really want to pop and stand out. That's what is the mark of a um, highly motivated and highly successful painter. Ah, now his cloak is really coming together. I mean, look at this. Looking on the inside, we see areas where the game was trying to copy the dry brushing on the opposite side, but it does a very poor job. So the true perfectionist is going to go back through and paint the inside down here. But you're also going to have to understand that on a normal gameplay situation, this tip is probably the only, well, even that, you're never really, you're never going to see it if it's on the game board. There's some areas that you might want to do now that I look at it, if you're going to be up close and spinning your model. Um, but we are ready to move on otherwise, and we're ready to go to the face. This is the most technical area, the, the area where we have to be the most careful with our artistic techniques. And actually, for a model, I recommend doing the face first, because it's so important. You want to be able to get it right, and if you're not happy with the face, um, that throws off the entire model. That's where people are going to look most often. I just wanted to be able to wait because we're bringing in all the techniques we've learned thus far to be able to get the highlights and coloring happening on his face because we've already established that the game understands this as one solid region. Everything that we do for a highlight here and also coloring in the hair is going to have to be quote unquote free handed. But we have the techniques with the dry brush and the wash to be able to make it very forgiving for quote unquote misclicks. And I'm, I realize I'm saying quotes way too often. We're just going to get into it here. First off, I need to be able to see his actual his hair color coming through. So we're going to pick a nice um, a dark hair color. Do I want char or do I want to go all the way up to shadow? Let's go ahead and just take our char color and bring it in here. So we want to go to the dry brush here first, the max opacity and start brushing over a little bit larger brush size, please. Yeah, color me in. Let us see what we've got to work with here. Get the mustache filled in. Get everything in. Now here we get an odd appearance as we finish the dry brushing because we're getting a reverse shadow. The skin tone is lighter and that's what's in the crevices and what's in the meeting point of the beard and the skin, which should be the beard color. 
uh, but right now is the skin color and the dry brush is not going to be able to get in there to actually color it. I'm not going to worry too much about getting a very smooth color here out of the dry brush because hair is, as we've established with the mane, very dynamic, shifts in color, getting a little bit of splotchy nature will actually make it look better in the long run, but we do want to make sure that we're not completely missing elements here. And we got eyebrows as well. Man, the level of detail they put into the minis here is fantastic. For a mini to have eyebrows, uh, a physical mini will effectively never get this kind of detail. We'll get this going. And again, even on the eyebrows, they've sculpted in waves of hair here with recesses and peaks. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous, somewhat nightmarish to paint, but we, we, where there's a will, there's a way, and we have a way, my friends. We have a way, and it doesn't require stone-cold um, capability to never misclick, never color outside the lines. Let's get this going, and we actually have more beard here making an appearance over his collar right here. We need to color this in. This is an area that's probably not going to get much attention of anything. This being just very dark in shadow from both the helmet and the collar makes the most sense to me. But we're going to give it a fair treatment here. So we come in. Now we grab our wash. This is naturally going to come into the recesses. Going to start filling those in nice and dark for us. And it also is going to naturally gravitate toward where the hair meets the skin. That's a recess that it is drawn towards filling, but then the rest of the smooth skin, quote unquote, repels it. If we get a bit of a, a slip and our paintbrush covers that area, it's not going to be very likely to give a very noticeable smudge. Like there we did. We had a pretty dramatic slip up there. We're gonna shrink the brush size, be able to come back in. Fantastic, get this portion of the beard filled in. Like I said, this area being all darker, is going to make the, the best ultimate appearance. Eyebrows as well. Get this going. You could probably have gone through entirely with the wash and with enough passes been able to color the peaks as well. You might have even gotten a little bit more dynamic looking with some of the highlight of the lighter color staying true on the very peaks. But I like the effect that we're getting here in this order. You can keep on playing around with uh, dry brush and wash back and forth to get the shade that you like and right now I think I think we've hit it look at this I got a spot down here on his neck we'll, we'll clean that up and then right here noticing something that's far too bright come in with the wash darken that up especially because it should be in shadow from his helmet we want to come down here get the underside very nice and dark not sure how often this is really going to be seen but I know that it needs to be dark Get this in here and then uh, clean up with the paint some of these splotches. There we go. Back to our nice clean color line right here. Okay, back to our wash. And we were using the charcoal here, right? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Let's try doing the hair with just the wash and see the effect that it gets. Actually, this is looking great. Maybe the airbrush is a little extraneous on this step. We'll get this down. This portion of the hair, not gonna get much attention. It's okay if it's splotchy. It's okay if there are slip ups because it's just covered by the helmet. We just need to see enough coming beneath the helmet for it to look accurate. There we are. He's even got an ear modeled under here, which is, <laughs> we haven't painted that at all. It's fine, look at this. This is a good looking guy. Now he's taking shape. Okay, now eyes. Oh man, the eyes are the window of the soul and on mini painting it is so, so hard because they are tiny and you are able to actually pick up subtle misses in terms of them being cross-eyed or looking the wrong direction. They can be quite the headache, but here with the undo feature, we should be able to get it. We want to see where he's looking, sighting down this pistol, find our camera angle there, find one that we like, zoom in, Okay, and now we get a nice look at these the whites of the eyes. I want a clean look at both of them. We're still inspired by Lucian, and Lucian is following the fantasy trope of the gold eyes. We're going to try here and see what we get. Doing shift to make sure I don't bleed over into his eyelids. 
that. Uh, I'm gonna say that looks really bad. We're gonna go lighter. Color it in. That doesn't read enough. Okay, we're gonna go back darker. Some given some play here is fine. Taking multiple takes here, completely fine. Try and even these up here. You want to leave a little bit of white on the sides and you want to go ahead and overflow your circle to be slightly covered up by the eyelids. Then we come in with our pure black. This is one of the cases we bring in the pure black for the pupil. And here, centering pupils and getting them even between the two eyes is paramount. And up close, it's gonna be uncanny valley. That's guaranteed. But out here, you know, maybe not my finest work, but I can read that they are eyes and I can read the direction. If we start turning this way, we can tell he's sighting down his gun. I think that that is acceptable. The, the true perfectionist might go in for a slight readjustment on this one to align a little closer but I think we've made it. I'm quite happy with this. Okay, now we're gonna clear our um, wet palette by pressing the little sweeper here. We need to highlight this face. Okay, now we are going to bring in the highlights for the face. So we are gonna do two levels of highlights. I want our center color. This is the base color that we're going with. Now we need to figure out how we're gonna lighten it up. We don't want to just go white and bring it paler as it gets lighter. I'm actually going to use more of a yellow. Um, faces have a readiness, a redness, that's what gives them life. Otherwise, everything looks like a like zombie-ish if we were to just, say, blend in the white here. I'll show it exactly what this looks like. Getting this as a, as a highlight and then trying to dry brush um, this is not going to... Oh, I have to drop her here. Drop her. There we go. And now dry brush me. Am I getting it on? This is just writing a, a paleness over him that looks, it doesn't look alive. It, it looks dusty. It could be an effect that you're interested in developing, but it's, it's not what we're going for here. So we are gonna actually add in our yellow onto the palette instead, which down here on the palette doesn't look as much yellow as slightly um, pink. What was, the, what was the exact shade? It's called Sunside. Um, I think that's well put for what we're developing here. Now we're gonna add the skin tone. And this is gonna be a highlight for us. And then a real light shade is gonna be over here. We're gonna try this one, dropper me. So this is not adding to our palette here. It's just selecting dropper on the left and then coming over with a left click. We can try and find the shade that we like from what we blended by looking at how it changes on top. And here we get the, the base coming back. This is a little lighter. I want the more light here. We're going to be doing multiple tones, so we've selected this. Come back to the dry brush. Okay, now that we have set up our highlight shades, we want to we want to give a little test here on how they look up against the skin. So we are going to grab our dropper rather than adding them to our palette here. We're just going to dropper select. Is it selecting? It does not selecting. Here we go. We can tell what we've got. And now with it selected, we'll head over to the dry brush. We have a very narrow piece here, a narrow brush size. Okay, let's get it larger. This is a very subtle difference, but that's good because we're doing layers here. And we can see what we've got. We're highlighting this cheekbone area. Right now it's just testing, just testing. And then give me Dropper on the even lighter side here. Dry brush again. And dry brush right down here. Okay. This is on the yellower side, but it's gonna be used very subtly for our final highlights. I think we can make it work. You can play around with faces forever. At some point you just have to call it good enough. There we go, all back to the, the standard. Now we get to cheat a little bit with it being a digital medium. We're gonna take our airbrush, pure white, and then we're gonna go straight down. And we're gonna make a pass right here. And now we're gonna come down and we're gonna take a look at our beautiful boy. This informs where we put our highlights, okay? 
we see that even though he's got the whole helmet feature, the very top of his forehead should be bright. It's still receiving. We're, we're using the white paint effectively as light. So we see that the top of his forehead receiving a lot of light. Around his eyes, not as much, but then these high points of the cheekbone, very bright. The nose, very bright. Lip, right here, very bright. And then the rest of the cheek fades into darkness. The rest of the neck here into darkness, etc. Now we're going to get the before and after with the undo. Oh, we did multiple passes. Yes, I remember. Redo. Bring it back. There we go. We get to see the different layers. So we did this pass coming this direction. And then this pass as a secondary coming this direction. Fantastic. Now that we've been informed as to how uh, our highlights can be positioned, time to go to work with the dry brush. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create droppers for these, these highlight bits. I want this to be a little lighter than it was when we tested. And honestly, I want the other one <laughs> to be a little darker. So let's come in here. Yeah, this looks like some differentiation. I love this. Okay, grab you. Turn our opacity down because that's going to be much more forgiving on our freehanding um, highlights. And here we go. We're going to start getting the, the forehead worked up right up to the eyebrow, this whole region. We can still leave, pa leave patches of shadow right around the, the crest of the helmet, etc. And then right here, I like keeping the camera high, looking down on him to kind of be even more informed as to where these shadows or the highlights are being positioned. And the nose, very important that we dramatically highlight the nose because skin is dynamic, not as much as hair, but still somewhat. Um, it is a little forgiving for if your uh, highlights come a little bit too dramatic or a little uneven, people will not mind. You get this lower lip, fantastic. A little more, more on the bridge of the nose. We can do kind of stripes coming down. This is all right. Okay, now as we look out, this is looking good. It's looking very good. We continue to zoom out. We're starting to see a lot more definition from the face the farther out we go because of the highlights. Before it would become muddled. Now it's looking much more readable. And that's where the yet more extreme highlight comes in. This we have to be more sparing with. It's a lot brighter. I'm still getting a bit on the forehead here, but not as much. This is mostly going to be as a center line to mark the highest point of the cheek, right along the edge of the nose here. As it comes down, he's got this very broad, well-defined nose. One of Max's best features, probably, if you asked him. I'm gonna come across. We don't want, this line ended up being a little bit uh, unblended. Get this extended a little bit, a little more. Make sure that it reads. There we go. Now, you can see that this is effective, like, from here you can see that it's just a line that we painted on as the highlight along the bridge of the nose. Even the center of the nose is not even, not even filled in, but this is fine. This is where understanding that the model is viewed from this point, we can already start to pick out facial features much more easily from way out here. Hopefully the YouTube resolution is enough to be able to bring that through. In here, still looking good. This area around the cheek could be blended a little more smoothly. This area, we kind of have pockets. The way I was highlighting, we developed pockets right in this region around the eyes that are too much. So we're gonna come in with a wash of the normal skin tone. Very low opacity. And this is gonna blend those highlights away. We're gonna darken these two regions. Get that toned down. It's also gonna smooth things over with everything around them. And then I think we probably wanna come in with our first highlight back to the dry brush and have just brighten up the rest of this cheek a little bit so that it doesn't look like our highlight was one single line along his face and then this line along the mouth to be able to receive a bit. Probably just need to bring the opacity up a little bit for it to make any difference though, eh? Get this in. Yeah, something like this. This region now is looking better defined. Yes, look at this guy. A little splotchy from here maybe, 
but as we come out, you can still read the details of his face. And honestly, this line right here is still too bright to me. So you can keep on tinkering around as much as you like to be able to settle things in as you please. Yeah, look at that. And splotchy. Part of it is because of how it's rendering plastic and glossy. And I'm gonna call it there, quite happy. But you can keep on using these techniques to tinker back and forth to receive the exact bit that you like. What, maybe you do three levels of highlights. Maybe you do four. Maybe you blend everything in with a wash in the middle. Techniques like this filter around to be able to get what you want. And of course, also the skin tone that you're using um, will dictate how well it reads really bright highlights. Because we have uh, a darker skin tone here, we don't want to go too bright. And we're not going to white, remember, we're going to yellow to keep the color in his face, the liveliness there. If you're going with a pale skin tone, you want some readiness in the cheeks as well, which adds another level of uh, dynamic face painting. And if we do another one of these tutorials, we're going to keep doing uh, some different skin tones to be able to get practice with this. Okay, now I have gone ahead and filled in the pants again using just the dry brush with this lighter shade here in the middle and focusing as we learned on the, the portions that are gonna be receiving the most light at the high portion of the pants, letting the legs of the pants stay dark and then coming in again at the base point, having fabric look a little dynamic, have this um, kind of what I call capstones, the, the two portions and then a darker band in the middle. It does read like fabric to me um, better than some other techniques. And so I'm happy with this. We did the same thing with the sleeves. Gonna touch up some other details and then we're gonna get to some really fun bits of doing glowing elements as muzzle flashes in the pistols and a stippling effect on the helmet to be able to try and get it to read a little more metallic. Okay, we got some grime on the belts. We got another layer of highlights onto the breastplate and the shoulder pauldron, just using the exact same techniques that we've been doing. Wash for the grime and shadow on the belts. Being very careful because they're such a light color, they'll look splotchy. I don't know how much I love the effect, but from far away, it does look like we picked up a little bit of shadow, a little bit more dynamic. Not my best work, but it is a start. I could think we're around with it more, but I'm pretty happy with where we landed. And then the pauldrons, the difference is subtle, but I think that it does add a layer of dynamicism that it was missing. Now let's do muzzle flashes. Muzzle flash technique is, you can do a lot of different ways to be able to build it up. This one that I'm gonna teach is definitely the simplest. <laughs> it's a two-step uh, glowing effect that we're gonna then utilize as the, uh, the burst out of the guns. So first off, we take the wash and we go white. We want to be able to fill in here all pure white. This is one of the cases where we're actually using pure white. It's because we're going to entirely cover it up, but we need the white base because the wash cares about what is underneath it. I want everything as bright as it can be. Get a nice effect. And we want it to go ahead and overflow because it's a light source. It's flashing out of the gun. The, this, the overflow of the light source is at, to our advantage. Now we pick, I'm going to say that he's firing some kind of... Uh, orange laser so we're looking at uh okay we just recovered from another game crash sorry for any rough transitions but we're back on programming our muzzle flash so we've got our white base very important for us to begin here and now we come in we're testing sunfruit right trying to see what kind of orange we're getting oh that is that is sharp i love it so now we want to go back to wash lower the opacity a lot we want to be careful with how we shape this Lower the brush size, get in here close. This It feels too close, but uh, we're gonna work with this. What we're gonna do is paint around, come on, get in there. Okay, opacity is too low apparently. There we are. Get this in, it covers the outside. Lower the brush size, get it a little more focused for me. 
There we are. Now I'm feeling it. I'm loving this. Okay. Light at the brightest point is going to be at the center, and that brightest point is going to be the whitest point, and then it will fade out to whatever color laser beam we think that Max is firing here. We might want to tone down so we don't get any pure white. And then we'll blend it one more time because I was reading a little bit of sharp white. And there we are. We can get the overflow maybe a little more. Let's see. That's the start. It's not the most elegant end result, but in terms of the effort of layering just two colors and then just working the wash, it's very simple to be able to pull off for a passable result, which again, red from far away, looks like his gun's going off, right? Right here, looks like it's going off. Yes, I like this. Do the other one now. Second take, maybe we can make it a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother. Take me my white. Also using the wash here. You could use the paint, honestly, because you're zoomed in so much, you're in a very controlled area. Get it running up the sides. Well, we, we overflowed all the way out of the muzzle. Okay. Undo. Oh, I didn't do a, a click in the middle. I'm not following my own advice, guys. Would have saved me time. It would have. I should have seen this video tutorial. Get this coming around. This side of the gun still so dark. I don't know. It bothered me a little bit. We got a lot of... Um, wash inside the barrel of this one to have to undo here so I'm okay with it being a little bit jagged back to our sun fruit what, what are they calling this yeah sun fruit <laughs> I love it okay here we go get this coming around up the edges blend it in the middle now darken the edges more come up so that none of this white is showing Want to getting nice and dark on the outside. There we go. Honestly, I'm going to bring some white back. We're going to dry brush the white back on. You could wash the white. There we are. Get a nice blend there. Yeah, these edges are not doing it for me. We're going to have to come around. Didn't want to have to do this, but they forced my hand. And there we are. It's passable. It's passable. I'm not gonna say it's probably the weaker, one of the weaker tips that I've had, but again, viewed from a distance. <laughs> the farther back we go, the sharper it's looking, guys. Okay, I'm I'm sold. I love this. Final project is the helmet. We need to be able to dry brush this guy, get some more um, dynamic look, and then we're gonna use the stipple effect to be able to switch over their decal, sorry. To be able to get a more metallic finish. So let's take our real light highlight here. Dry brush, a little more here. We wanna be careful because the helmet is such an interesting shape for picking out what is shadowing itself. So again, we can do the cheat, which was taking the airbrush, pure white, large here we go make a pass and now look at the helmet specifically we're reading this back region very much in shadow but even this is the the remarkable piece to me this band right here it feels like natural intuitively it'd be catching some shadow from the built-up portions of the helmet but it's catching plenty of light so this highlight can still be strong and then the highlight's strong here at the tip much weaker down here at the base this backside of the helmet can remain almost unchanged. And then right here is the helmet flared, so we want a strong highlight. So that can inform. We go undo. And I love how simple that is. Come back here with the dry brush and now start implementing what we had just learned. Turn the opacity down a little bit, give us a little more forgiving of an edge. And get this portion highlighted. Try and recreate things. Bridge of the nose I want pretty bright. And then remember that we can follow in here. Get this nice and bright, but let it fade away towards the back. And then similarly up here at the tip, this tip needs to be as bright, like fully highlighted. We could even take a higher level of highlight and get a sharper level there. And now here, 
we're just highlighting the lines. We can leave the middle faded, especially because it's metal. It's a little more forgiving to having that kind of, um, oh, I'm not gonna say stippled because we're about to use a stipple brush to have a different effect. But the, the splotches will make it look a little more metallic and it's, it's okay, it's gonna be believable. I can't get the right brush size here, I'm sorry. All right, zoom me in, maybe this is what I'm missing. I'm trying to handle everything at once. And I just want this line. Get this nice and clean. Get this portion coming up. We've chosen a fairly subtle highlight cover color compared to what we painted the helmet. This is all right. Still coming together pretty nicely. We want all of this nice and bright. This ended up picking up a lot of the wash just because of the shape of the model. So we're undoing a little bit there. Getting the color back. Having that beautiful moonstone shade be able to come through. And now honestly, we're gonna wanna stripe through here. Just a nice trace outline. Get this line a little better. Help define where we were painting that purple. This pass with the dry brush will help make those lines look sharper. Then we want this, which had been smudged as we touched things up. Now it's not looking so bad. And I want to take some of this shadow away again. Come back around this line. Just a single pass. Feels to me like it's cleaning things up. This smudge is still bothering me a little bit, but we, I don't know. We'll, we'll wait for the stippling before we actually um, come back and maybe smooth it out. This feels a little too harsh with all the shadow. Get some of these elements highlighted, even though they were cast. The airbrush from the top, what's called a zenithal highlight is what we were doing there. You'll hear it referred to as a zenithal highlight. What we were doing there, the zenithal was not showing any, any light on this area, but I want the feature of the helmet to be quite visible. And you could come in with like accent colors for the helmet and really have fun with detailing this because it's somewhere that is gonna draw a lot of attention, especially if you draw it up um, nice and bright. We're not going to go overboard here. You've been given the techniques to be able to succeed at, at venturing off and um, flourishing, I'll say. You can flourish all you like. Max would certainly appreciate that, given his personality. But I'm fairly happy with how we've made the helmet more dynamic now. Much easier to pick out the details. So let's get the stipple in here. What the stipple is doing is we can show on the back of the cloak in the most easy way. Give us a large brush, and then honestly pick out a nice dark color. Nice large brush, I said. We do this, we're seeing the spotted effect. You're getting a stippling. What this is imitating in the real world is taking a sponge, dabbing it in your paint, and then splotching it on the model. It's great for creating camo patterns, showing wear, and also showing metal in some cases has this kind of appearance. So I wanna show how we can make this look a little bit more metallic. Now your size of brush does matter with the stippling. You see with a larger brush, we're getting larger splotches. So it's saying that the, the size of your sponge effectively has been upped. If we want smaller splotches, which I believe we do, we're gonna come in like this. We're gonna bring them in. You want them to be pretty uniform. Coming over here, giving it some, some battle wear appearance. Pretty faint, but I still want them on. Coming across. This might be too dramatic now that I'm looking at it. We'll see how it looks from far away first though, before we, we say that we need a, a retouch up. Zoom me out. Yeah, it's too much. Okay, take them off. Keep going. We did a lot of small passes. Okay, so we're gonna take the opacity down fairly significantly so they don't seem as dramatic. Maybe even take the size down a little bit. Get in here. Yeah, okay, this is looking better. With the lower opacity, they don't stand out nearly as much and they all blend in as a, as a texture of the metal, as it were. Come around the back. Get this up. There we go. Lead right along the side here. Across the front. There we go. So there we are. 
a little bit of a, a blast speckling. I don't know, if you don't like it, you can always take it off. Um, but I'm actually pretty happy with what we got there. The last thing is that the cloak actually, we never went over with a dry brush. We just left it as the, the base level. So we want to take our brightest color. I want to make sure that this is visible. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. And we're going to dry brush along the high points of the cloak. We don't want to cover over the detail, the trim work that we'd already done. So really this dry brushing should have been done before we labored on the trim. But it's going to help a little bit for picking out the details of the cloak. And this front region especially can use some. I think I smudged over here a little bit. Uh, undo me. Yeah. Okay. Let's be a little more careful here. So this is something that we should have really done earlier. But the cloak was looking so good. I just let it ride. Okay. Get this band in. Anywhere that is bunching and showing that it's kind of billowing out. I want a little lighter. I like this. And this whole area can be a little brighter. This line especially. Up here. Get some ridges. It's a little bit more. More than the flat matte gray that we'd had. Okay, we have just some final details that I want to cover here in the video, one of which is the gloves. Very important. We've actually not touched these up till now. Uh, we're going to take the wash, come through. So this is showing what the wash is going to look like with something that is supposed to be kind of a, a vibrant color. So we're coming through. We're careful here. We've learned put the wash more heavily on the underside where we know we want the most shadow to finish and be more sparing towards the top where we're going to but we also know we're going to dry brush many times over here. So we're going to be able to get the, um, the bright color back in. Make sure that these fingers have strong definition. Get his other glove done here while we're on the wash. Then we're going to highlight. And then what's interesting here for Max is he's got these knuckle plates. Uh, we're going to work on those to be able to get another accent color on the glove. Just to get another way that they can really pop into this part. <laughs> had been destroyed, so we go paint. Yeah, get you back in there, yeah, yeah. Now wash it down so that it's not even that color anymore. Hang on. Get it all the way in here. This whole was a, this was a miss on our part on the first base coating pass. But that's okay, if you find stuff part way through, you're able to very quickly find those colors again, bring it back in. Definitely this portion of the glove needs to be dark. I'm gonna wash that out. Maybe that's too much. I think I went overboard there. That's it's fair to say we went overboard there. Quicker pass. How's that? Yeah. Gets the shadow, I think, an unbelievable level. The other glove is very similarly positioned. And now inside close to the body. We don't want this to accidentally be brighter than the outside. We want to make sure that we don't forget putting shadow here. We could forget to put highlight and that would be fine. Uh, it's going to be very hard to see and it's naturally going to be it's going to intuitively be more shadowed. Now we take reset here, get our nice purple, get a nice light color to blend against, and then purple it up, get a nice lavender. Yeah, get that in there. Come on, a little more. Now we want our dropper to find what we're going to dry brush as the highlight. Something like this. Dry brush me. See how we look. Maybe shorten this up a little. Yeah, this is good. Okay, so now we come in across the fingers. Get a nice pattern going here. Get it across the gloves top. Let the volume of how rounded it is start to speak. That's what we're trying to do here. Fingers around the front. There we go. Other glove. Trying to see the model from as many different angles as possible is really advantageous that you get a real um, sense of where you're filling in, where you're missing potentially. And then finally, we're just coming in here <laughs> with what we wanted to do is this light, the blonde color that we've used for everything as an accent onto the knuckle plates. 
And so here again, it's a point of needing to freehand it, but the, between the dry brush and the wash, we should be able to get this nice and filled in. Zooming in very close to get a good read. Maybe we don't even need the wash on this. Okay, we're gonna do one here and then zoom out to be able to check our progress. How's that look? Oh, I love it. Okay, we're not even gonna do the wash on this one. I like how this stands out. I'm gonna finish these and then we'll come and take stock of our creation. And look at the, how that pops. I love it. So is Max 100% done? Uh, no, there's plenty of space for embellishments and you can just keep on going. I've kind of missed this leather belt. On the back of the boots, it's a good idea to come in with the airbrush and a, uh, a brown tone. Let's kind of spray this in to deepen these up as though they've been in, you know, contact with the ground. Catch this one as well. It's already in shadow a little bit, which is going to help out reads. Fantastic. And there's ample places for other flourishes, especially on the weaponry to be able to bring in the bronze color on some of these elements, maybe some other glowing elements. If we go back to our point of comparison, the best point that we have is the developer's default. There we go, the default scheme, hang on. There it is, I don't know why I was showing one of my earlier scenes. Um, the developers have done a lot more with the metallic effects with real bright highlights and then some darker patchy places you can go to imitating this to bring it up to the next level. They've got elements of some brighter paint here and they've just really built up their highlights to an even higher extent, even showing some tonal differences here on the pants with this olive color and then having the highlights a light tan, beautiful contrast, very true to how fabric weathers. And then on the breastplate, actually doing a contrast of silver and gold. So you can embellish and embellish and embellish and just keep on going. And if you've got time to soak in the details, like here he's got uh, caps on the boots. There's just so much that you can do because these models really are lovingly rendered with enough detail put onto the models that you can keep on going. They did the same idea here with the, the knuckle pieces. I mean, honestly, I'm drawing my inspiration just off of this and how they modeled it, but this is us. We are toned down, not quite as vibrant, but we still get a lot of definition on the details. And we were able to pass through all of this very quickly, really relying on the dry brush. That is what did Yeoman's work on bringing out the shadows, the highlights, etc., cetera, et cetera. That is where we are going to end our beginner painting tutorial. This gives you all the tools to be able to recreate this and go farther, but depending on how much time you want to invest on a single model or if you want to start spreading your color scheme across an entire warband, you are perfectly capable of doing so. If you want to see more painting tutorials here on the channel, leave a like, leave a comment here on something uh, that you're interested in seeing me paint, um, specific models or potentially techniques, some kind of effect that you're struggling to create yourself, I could be able to create uh, something to help out with that. Also, if you want to see Max himself in action, then check out my other videos here with the Moonbreaker gameplay. I've been loving that side of the game as well. It seems like Moonbreaker is the full package here. Able to sink so many hours into gameplay, but then also painting. Absolutely love it here. Till next time, thank you guys for watching and keep on painting.